We're making a super cute and easy sunflower candle box for the What Would You Make Challenge. Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm participating in the monthly What Would You Make Challenge hosted by Zaina of OK at Home DIY and Connie of Connie's Creative Creations. This month, Brenda of Rustic and Lace is our lovely guest host. Their channels, as well as the playlist, will be in the description box. Let's get into it. I've cut all of my pine wood components to size with my miter saw. The backer board is 7.5 inches by 16, and from the bottom center, I notched out a 3 inch wide by 2 inch high rectangular section with my scroll saw. This is so we can feed the candle cord through it. You don't need to do this if you're using a battery operated candle. For the box portion, I cut two pieces at 7.5 inches wide by 2 and a quarter high for the front and bottom of the box. I also cut two 1x2s to 2.5 inches for the box sides. Just a very simple box. This is big enough to fit the candle base and all the measurements will be in the description box. So we'll go ahead and paint all of our pieces black. I'm using Americana acrylic paint for this and I'm going to give it two coats, front and back. So I went ahead and drew out the pattern for my backer, which is the most basic of sunflowers, as you can see. And I'm going to tape my sketch to my backer at the very top. I have here some white transfer paper, which I'll place between the board and the sketch. And then I'm just going to go ahead and trace the pattern onto my backer. When I was drawing the um, pattern, I used a jar lid for the large circles. So I'm just going to go ahead and use it again here, lining it up with the one on the pattern. It's easier than freehand tracing the circle. And I'll do the same for the other circles too, using the items I originally used to trace them on. Now I'll trace all my petals and leaves. You just want to make sure that the pattern paper doesn't shift. Also, I recommend that before untaping, you check your pattern. You know, make sure that you didn't miss any tracing of any part of your pattern. All there, good stuff. We can start painting. I'm beginning with the flower centers and I'm using Americana Raw Sienna for this. When I paint circles, I use a flat or a wash brush. I hold it straight up at 90 degrees and rotate the brush around. The bristles do all the work, and if it goes wonky, I can always touch it up. And I'm going to give these two coats. I always try to use the largest brush to fit the area, so when I move to a smaller area, I move to a smaller brush. Once I've completed my two coats, I will make smaller burnt orange circles inside the raw sienna ones in the exact same way. My flowers have front petals and back petals, so I'll start painting the yellow front petals with Folk Art Daybreak. Nothing fancy, just filling them in, and I'm going to give them two coats. I think sunflowers are a really good beginner project because one, everybody loves them, and also because it's just circles and teardrop shapes. These are very basic flowers, but no worry because we'll stylize them as we go. They'll kind of have a boho vibe when we're finished. These boxes, I'm actually making two of them. I'm only showing you one, but there are two. Anyway, my friend Michelle asked me for some flowers, so I hopped on Pinterest and searched for ideas. There's an enormous selection of sunflower images to get your creative juices flowing. Now, I personally love to paint, but if you're not comfortable with that, you could always use a decal or a rub on or even Mod Podge on an image to this basic candle box. It's really super easy and a great starter project. And I'm not sure if I mentioned, but of course the yellow is going to need a couple coats because it's so transparent. Now I'm going to move on to the back petals with ceramic coat straw. Again, these will get two coats. Once my yellow flowers are base coated, we'll move on to the orange flowers. My front petals are ceramic coat bittersweet orange, and the back petals will be ceramic coat warm sunset. I really want a painterly effect to this, so I'm not going to worry too much if you can see the strokes, but I do want a solid base for the petals. Now 
The leaves are base coated with Americana Irish moss. There's only a couple leaves just to pull some of that green into the pattern really. Now it's my favorite part, time to shade. I'm using my Folk Art Floating Medium for this, which is a clear gel product. I'll show you how I load my brush. I dip my brush into the medium and I work it into the bristles. And then I'm going to scoop the paint onto the corner of the brush and stroke it on my paint on my plate to load the paint into the bristles. This is called side loading. I'm side loading with Ceram Coat Straw and we'll use this to shade the front petals. I'm just going to pull my brush down the side of the petal and across the bottom. And you'll see that I reload frequently. I'll pull in a wee bit here, not too much because when I do it only blurs the picture. Sorry about that. So the shading will be heaviest at the base of the petals. All of the front petals, the yellow petals, will get the straw shading. I do have a, a shading video which I'll link below in case you're interested to see this in more detail. Now you probably know that I love my floating medium, but you could also shade by dry brushing um, the shading in, or if you wanted to, you could just leave a little extra water in your brush, side load with your paint, stroke it on your plate to load the bristles just like I did, and you could do it that way minus the floating medium. I prefer the floating medium, but it's really not necessary. It's a matter of preference. And then again, you can always just use a smaller brush and just with straight paint, go in and just kind of follow the bottom of the petals and along the side, that would work too. You know, whatever you're comfortable with. Now I'll repeat this on the back petals with raw sienna. And you know, I like to layer my shading, so I'll also enhance the front petals, shading with the raw sienna too, cause that's how I roll. We'll repeat the shading process on the orange flowers with Americana Burnt Orange for the front petals. The back petals, I'll shade with the Ceram Code Opaque Red. The leaves are shaded with Ceram Code Hunter Green, and it's basically the exact same way that I did the petals. You just want to keep your shading, you know, where there would be a shadow if this were an actual sunflower. What I'll do now is add some teardrop shapes around the center of the flower at the base of the petals to give the impression of seeds. I'll do this to all of the flowers except the orange one top right that will get charcoal seeds around the orange center circle. And I decided to dot some of the charcoal circles around that center of the big flower. And you know what? Let's add daybreak seeds around the center of the big orange flower on the right. We'll dip dot with dark chocolate in the raw sienna of each flower. I'm just using the back of a skewer for this. Now, let's add some white dots and dashes to the centers, just for some interest. I think this really kind of pumps up the boho vibe too on this. I felt like the orange flowers were a bit flat, so I'm adding a highlight with Ceramco Calypso Orange. It's the same process as shading, really. I'm just placing it opposite the shading, if that makes sense. Yeah, I definitely think the highlight is bringing in the orange to life there. We are in the home stretch for the painting. We'll outline everything with white. 
every petal and leaf. The only thing I don't outline are the dark chocolate dots in the center. I have a wee bit of negative space, so I'm going to fill it in with some doodles and hippo gray. Before I do anything else, I'll spray a coat of clear matte sealer on my backer to protect my painting. Okay, let's assemble the box. I'll use wood glue to adhere the sides to the bottom, and I'm going to clamp them until they're set. And you can see I'm just lining up edge to edge. Then we'll glue on the front, and we're going to clamp that too. For extra support, I'm going to attach corner braces. These are 2 inch, and they each hold 4 screws. Now, I did drill pilot holes before screwing these in place, which makes it much easier, and less likely your wood's going to split. And we'll glue the box to the backer, just like we did before, and I'm going to clamp this as well. You just want to make sure that everything is level because you don't want a wobbly box. I've drilled pilot holes on the back and I'll add screws to attach the backer to the box. Again, this is for extra support because the box is only being held onto the backer board right now with glue, so we want to make sure it doesn't come free. See? That was pretty easy, right? I'll embellish the box with this really cool braided jute with leaves that Timu sent me. I'm attaching it with 3-in-1 glue, and I'm going to wrap it around the sides, too. I wrapped some jute into a coil, and to give this a finished look, I'll add these jute coils to, you know, hide the raw edge of the braiding. I forgot to mention that I did spray this again with clear matte sealer before I added the jute. So all we need to do is pop the candle in place, and we're done. You can add sunflowers or leaves or berries or, you know, paper shred, stones, rocks, whatever you like in the box around the candle, or you can leave it as is, whatever blows your hair back. I hope you liked today's project. I think this is a really good beginner project. Let me know what you think. Please be sure to check out Zaina, Connie, and Brenda's channels. I've linked them in the description box as well as the playlist. You're going to want to check out that playlist. There are some really cool projects. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.